comic books, movies, TV, and more. Nerds are everywhere. It's time to assemble! It's Nerds United. Hello and welcome to this brand new and, dare I say, very special episode of Nerds United, a Jittery Monkey podcast and also available to you right here on YouTube. Now, we're recording this. It is the night before Thanksgiving 2023. You'll probably see it there on Thanksgiving. That's when it will actually hit uh, YouTube and in the podcast realm. But we have a tradition around here that's only been broken to my knowledge once, and that was last year when I was sick. Uh, and oh, by the way, I should introduce myself. I'm your host, Greg Mahochko, and this dashing and debonair individual uh, to my left and your right is the co-host of the year, Mike Luther. Mike, would you be so kind as to tell the good people about our tradition? Yes, like you were saying, we have a tradition now uh, started by you. Yeah. Well, at least, at least introduced to me by you. And it's called Turkey Before Turkey. And what we do is we take a shot. Now, it's supposed to be a shot of wild turkey. I didn't get wild turkey, but I got something better. I don't know if you have specifically wild turkey with you. I have wild turkey American honey. I have Jack Daniels Tennessee honey. Oh. Yeah. So we both have a, a you know, a shot, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is in the realm of wild turkey, although much better. Um, and, and, it all, and we, it all tastes the same to me. Oh, it's all this is delicious, and uh, we we do this uh, in in honor of Thanksgiving, I guess. And all the turkeys who have given their lives for our yes. enjoyment, yes, in our full bellies. Um, and, and here's the thing: I'll, I'll say from years past, uh, I'm Greg actually has a full shot because in your in years past, he's done like. A little like thimbleful, <laughs> and in one, if you can go back and and watch, I think I think it's on video. Um, Greg uh, had a very strange chaser. I don't know if Greg remembers this. Greg, do you remember what the chaser you had one year was? I, I don't. It was chocolate milk. Oh God! <laughs> what was I thinking? Yeah, I think you did it for comedic effect, but I'm not really sure. Okay, well, I have a chaser uh, tonight as well that I guess could be considered having a a chocolateness to it. Uh, I have a beer from Big Muddy Brewing down in, I believe it's Murfreesboro, Illinois. Okay. Something like that. Uh, This is their S'more Stout. Interesting. Curious about that one. Me too. It's 5% or 5.5% alcohol by volume. Um, our friend Kevin Huntsberger of my one, two, three cents, the podcast is a big fan of big muddy brewing and let's see Murfreesboro, Illinois malt beverage brewed with natural flavor. Well, tonight I'm just doing this shot and then I am doing, um, not a good chaser at all. It's just literally like grape flavored water. I don't know how well that's going to go together, but uh, tomorrow night I'll be doing a little bit more drinking so a few more shots a few more yeah probably all right here we go let's launch you god hey this is a, why this is a horrible tradition that's pretty smooth for whatever reason it's not as bad as i remember it yeah see see So what's your Thanksgiving plans? Oh, uh, well, um, tomorrow is also my wife's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. I'll tell her you said that. Yes. Uh, so <clears throat> that's unrelated. I, I'm still fighting the cough. That's not shot okay. related. I feel like I need to get out in front of that one. Right. Um, so we'll get up, kind of relax a little bit. Uh, at some point, we'll turn on the Macy's Parade. I, uh, I got one of those Pillsbury like rolls of Pil- Pillsbury cinnamon rolls. So we'll pop those in the oven, have those for breakfast. And then tomorrow afternoon, at like th- three o'clock or so, we'll arrive at my mom and dad's and we'll do Thanksgiving dinner. And since it's my wife's birthday and she's uh, 
she's should be asleep. I'm I'm sure she's asleep uh, up up there. She can't hear me. But uh, I got like some party hats and some streamers over there that I set up this morning, and even a little cake. This is Happy Birthday Ashley on it. So nice. Not doing pie. We're gonna do cake, uh, apple crumble, and mom and dad made cookies earlier this week as well. So okay, okay, sounds good. How about you? Uh, it's funny because I would say like two weeks ago, I would have had completely different plans because at that time, my mom was in El Paso. Right. And we didn't know when she was coming home and stuff like that. So somebody had asked me and they're like, um, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? I'm like, nothing. I'm staying home. Like, I'm not doing it, you know, cause normally I go to my mom's, she's not gonna be there. So no big deal. You know, then Thanksgiving has never been a, like a huge thing for me. Well, obviously my mom's back now. And then. My brother also invited us over for brunch slash breakfast. So really, if all goes well tomorrow, I'm going to get up early, going to go to the gym. Then I have to go to my brother's at 1030, which really means I'll probably get there at 11, um, have like breakfast there, then go to my mom's house later in the uh, afternoon-ish, early evening for spaghetti because we don't do traditional turkey. Um, and then and then go back to my brother's house, because he's having uh, people over for watch the Guns and Hoses pay-per-view. It's like a boxing a oh, yeah. versus you know boxing thing to watch that. So I'm going to go be going back and forth. So, <laughs> no. And be a very I, busy individual. Yeah, and I've all, for my brothers, I already made, because somebody told me, actually, uh, somebody told me that like a good recipe for like a dessert and essentially like Oreo balls. She calls them penguin balls. And I think it's not even in a, in a perverted manner. I think she just likes penguins, but it's uh it's basically just Oreo and cream cheese, crumble it up and then dip them in. I dipped them in uh, melted white chocolate, but they're already done. So they're in, they're, they're in the fridge right now. Seems a little early for penguin balls. You know what? That's maybe, but I was looking for for something to bring. Wasn't sure what I was going to bring. I was looking up different desserts, kind of more breakfasty desserts, but I think these will work, and they were easy to make. Well, that's all. Sounds like a wonderful time. It should be. I hope so. And then on Friday, Ooh, what are you doing on Friday? Friday. Nebraska plays Iowa. Oh, and we know Iowa sucks. Yeah, that that's why it's that's why it's so windy in Nebraska because Colorado blows and Iowa sucks. <laughs> and what time uh, do they play? Eleven o'clock. And after that, then I'll be going to my in-laws in Centralia because I can't convince them to move to a better town. I, yeah. So, they want to move, but they want to move to Kentucky. And I'm like, if you do, that's like, I'm not driving to Kentucky. Kentucky's good. Well, p- parts of Kentucky are good. Yeah, but it's a long drive with yeah. little children. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not, not dicking around with that. Um, but we're, we're going to have quite the weekend, I think. I don't know why. I don't know how. Oh, because my wife's birthday is tomorrow, we're dumping the dummy. We're taking the children to my mom and dad's on Saturday and my wife and I are going to go bum around a little bit, do some like birthday shopping it with intent for her. Cause like, I don't know what to get her. Right. I, right. I got her a few things from the boys, but I figured, well, we'll go out. We'll have a nice meal. We'll, we'll bum around. Like we can go to, we can go to all the, all the craft stores you want to go to. Yeah. To find whatever you want to find. And that's going to be like my present to her. So nice. Very cool. Be like, here it is. It's a, a no limit credit card type shopping spree, which you, there's are, definitely are, a limit. I was gonna say, are you taking her credit card? Or there, there's definitely a limit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what the weekend shaking shaping up to be. Nice. So, All right. Well, that sounds good. It's hopefully sometime in there I find some time to relax, but I doubt it. Yeah, yeah. You don't I get to relax I, when you're an adult. I find. You know, and it's probably different for you because you got you got little kids and stuff like that. For me, um, I whenever I go place like like when I go uh, to my brother's tomorrow, 
really, I'm just I'm, I'm going to have fun there. It's going to have good food because I like breakfast food. But really, I'm just going to be thinking, okay, when is the like? Am I staying too long? Am I not staying long enough? You know, what's and, that spot of not wearing out? You're welcome. Right, right. And I don't. I I I guess the I don't know if there's going to be the parade's going to be on. Somebody was ta- talking to me today about the parade. She mentioned that um, something about the parade, and I'm like, I was like, I haven't watched that parade in probably since I was a little kid. We try to watch it um, with you know, kind of annually. Like, I, all right, so say what you want. I'm a little old school, but the Christmas season for me starts when I see Santa in the Macy's parade at okay. the end. That's fair. Now, what I didn't know, I did not know that the, you know, like the parade broadcast starts at like nine o'clock. Yeah. But apparently, according to Google right now, not for uh, broadcasts like television time, but the parade starts at 7.30 in the morning uh, central, so 8.30 eastern. Um, yeah. But it, obviously, you know, they, they're able to edit it and chop it up, and et cetera, et cetera, by doing the 9 o'clock um, show time. So, you know, hey, we'll uh, if nothing else, we'll watch the last 45 minutes of it. You know, the most important part. By the way, speaking of Christmas, I know this year we're not doing our traditional um, Christmas movie madness tournament because we know the, who's gonna, who would win. The traditional thing we've done once before. We, we did well, twice, but twice. no, we did it twice. Yeah, well, I'll say we did do it twice. Yeah, but there's um, a big gap of years in between the first one and the second one. Yeah, yeah. I thought we didn't we do it twice? Didn't I do it twice? Or was it only I once? So. I think just once. Once, but still, we know who would win. Um, so we got to figure out what to do. We, we got to figure out something just for us for Christmas. And I was thinking, like, I don't know, if Christmas foods or Christmas snacks. Well, I know we're we're planning a, a show, a topic that we haven't in the past. And that's our, our top five Christmas songs. Yes, which is an interesting one because I don't really sing many songs, but I'll, I'll, I'll think of ones that maybe warm my heart a little bit. That's or... Warm my ears. <laughs> Maybe it's the shot of wild turkey. <laughs> I thought you gonna be like, or warm my genitals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, depends where you put the speaker, I guess. Hey, what does Mike want for Christmas this year? Oh, uh, God, I honestly don't know. Comics. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Should we begin? <laughs> Let's do it. Did you uh, read or acquire any new comics this week, Mike? Uh, I did not acquire any. That's going to have to come much, much later. How's but the break I, situation? Yeah, yeah, breaks and Christmas, you know, um, paying off the credit card because of breaks and Christmas. But um, I did start reading uh, Joker. It's downstairs. So I can't show it right now. Uh, Joker by... Azarello and Bermano. Azarello, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I'm maybe halfway through it. I, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting one. You know, I. It is it, called. It's just Joker, and is Joker getting out of um, Arkham Asylum? They let him out. This is all I know so far. They let him out because he says he's not crazy anymore, and essentially he's trying to go around and um, take back Gotham. You know, mm-hmm. when, when he when he went away, uh, the different uh, mid level, maybe to high level bosses kind of took over his areas, and now he wants them back. Um, and it's interesting. So far, I haven't. There hasn't been any really good guys per se. Like I'm always curious. Like, oh, is Batman going to show up? Because like in a movie, you could never have the villain be the lead and not. Um, have some kind of redemption to it. So I'm, I'm curious where, and in comic books, it's different, obviously. Um, I'm curious about where they go from here. So that's the only one I've I've been reading. And I believe... You can fly. And you can touch the sky. <laughs> I believe. I was, yeah. uh, think about it every night and day. <laughs> yes, 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 you do. <laughs> the That Joker, at least visually, is not 
too dissimilar from like the Heath Ledger Joker from the Oh Dark. yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's not I'm not saying that it's you know, it's inspired by but it's not the same Joker like in universe canon, no. you know, Christopher Nolan Joker type stuff. So, uh but no, that's a good book. Uh, um, I've read it a couple of times. I I don't think he's listening, so I think I'm fair to say this for at least another six or eight months. Um, I lent that book out to best friend of the show, Josh. I'm almost certain that I did. And he's going through and he's, he's sending me pictures. He's like, Hey, do you want to buy any of these books from me? And one of those was Joker. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's mine that I've let you borrow. <laughs> Needless to say, we, we never, we never figured it out. never sorted it out. Uh, but I had a gift card to Twilight Comics, Swansea, Illinois, and I just acquired it again to re-add to my collection. So I think I've probably bought that twice now. So uh, I hope you enjoy it, but please don't try to sell it back to me. <laughs> I was just going to say, hey, by the way, I have a Joker book if you want to buy it. You do? It. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. That's 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 a, that's a good strategy. Just ask, <laughs> see if you want to buy your books back. Okay. It, and I believe it, if it's innocent, it's, hey, would you like to buy this book? But if it's uh, intentional, like, Hey, I'm holding your book hostage. Here's right, the right. ransom. Twelve dollars and fifty eight cents. Has he tried that with the lock and key books yet? Nope. Okay. Uh, uh, we we just stopped talking about it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we don't want to bring up the the. You know he my my children have been kidnapped. Right. Right. And and if there's any enforcement law enforcement agencies out there. By that I mean my comic books, my comic have, been, books yes. have been uh lent out and not returned, and that's okay because he'll read them eventually. Yes. So so what about no. you? I know I know you we talked a little bit before starting a recording. You said you had bought some comic books. I did. Um a couple of that are you know some titles that I've been reading for a little while now. So I have issue number four. Of you know, I'm gonna turn off my uh, blurriness because everybody's in bed anyway, so I don't need to. There's nothing I need to blur. Uh, but I have issue four of Gargoyles Dark Ages. Nice. And I, I mean that. If you just saw that, I feel like that's a very compelling cover. You know, it's got the gargoyle that we know would come to know as Demona. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. But then you see all like the gargoyle eyes. Oh okay, yeah. In the back. Um, which you don't really catch at first, you know, at, at it from a distance. So I've got that. And I have issue four, almost knocked over my beer of, and I'm glad that I think I mentioned this to you. I said, um, Oh, you know, I just read number three and I, I hope number four comes out soon. And it did number four of the immortal Thor. Yes. I think we all know what the side of the hammer reads. Yes. Okay. So you're not sure if you're not familiar Whosoever holds this hammer, if they be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. So there's that. And one that I got off of the trade paperback shelf, um, more out of curiosity than anything. It's always a character I found intriguing. Never did a deep dive into much more than like the surface stuff. So what I acquired is... X-Men Rise of Apocalypse. Oh, okay. And buddy, this is beefy. That is Oh my gosh, yeah. Th- this is uh let's see if I can find it. You know what? I could say I was hoping it would say uh collecting Rise of Apocalypse 1 through 16, yeah. but I was like 1 through 4, 1 through 4, 1 Dracula 1 through 4. I mean, so it just collects a lot. So Yeah. Um you know, that'd be pretty interesting. It It's a, uh, if I could just pull very quickly, at least so I'll have a timeline of when it was originally published without taking up too much time here on the show. I apologize to all of you who have waited for this show to not watch me open up a book and look for information. Um, I mean, 2016, kind of when this, arc starts i think so that seems like just a year or two ago it does seem like it. it's been a little bit more than that but uh um yeah so well here's the thing i honest to god i didn't hate x-men apocalypse the movie and i liked while 
it's one of the worst actors of all time in Oscar Isaacs. Uh, I, I appreciated the limited origin story that they gave the character of Apocalypse in um, in that ancient Egypt setting. Yeah. So um, that part, you know, like, hey, give me give me a nice period piece. I'm, I'm down with that. So it was. Yeah. X-Men Apocalypse. It wasn't the best X-Men movie and it wasn't the worst X-Men movie. It was definitely an X-Men movie in the middle. It was. Yes. Uh, I saw this. I don't know if, if you saw the headline. Um, Iman Vellani. Yes. I'm getting that right. Uh, mm-hmm. Who plays Ms. Marvel. Right. There's an X-Men or there's a, I'm sorry, a Marvel movie that she refuses to watch. And I feel like I almost kind of gave it away. It's not yeah. X-Men Apocalypse. It's X-Men Dark Phoenix. Yeah, I understand. Did she, she say why? But I mean, I understand. But I didn't get that far. I, I was, I may have been driving it. I don't know. <laughs> I I didn't get a chance to read the full article. I just I was like, what? What is this clickbait nonsense? And uh, okay, uh, yeah, I get Makes your sense. point. So, uh, but we talked a little bit about. Uh, no, we didn't talk about Marvels. You were going to see, yeah, the Marvels uh, at our last recording. So, what did you think about the movie? Okay, so do you want good or bad first? Let's do bad. Bad? Okay. The bad is the three of them together don't really work. I would have much rather picked any two of them and had, like, like um, uh, Captain Marvel and Monica would have been a great movie together. And then at the, you know, end, end credit scene, you introduce Ms. Marvel okay. or, you know, show Ms. Marvel. Or if you want to do Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel, that would have worked, you know, or, you know, whatever combination. They had to manu for whatever reason, they felt that they needed to manufacture um, a conflict between Monica Rambeau and Captain Marvel. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. And they tr- they tried to do it for you know, this, you know, convoluted reason. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, no, that doesn't make sense. Um, typical, jive. yeah, typical, a typical Marvel villain where I honestly did not remember the name of the villain until I uh watched a pitch meeting, and even then, they made a joke about not remembering the name of it. Was it Dan Mar? Nope, Darpan, Darpan, yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. And and once you watch it, you won't even remember it. Um, and it's one of those villains where like they, they could have done, and I thought they were they were they kind of made you believe at one point that it was going to be like a redemption thing, like the villain was going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did this, I'm going to change type of thing, and it would and it would have been so much better, um, and it didn't happen, and also they changed just randomly um, Captain Marvel's uh, kind of like her tone, kind of. She would go from a maybe very jovial, goofy person, and then all of a sudden she's like basically letting people die, and then back to um, apolo- Then she'd apologize for some, and it was going back and forth. Um, no, like tonal consistency. Not really, no. and like there was, um, and there was certain times where. So I would say one of the good things is that they had a good action scene, and it was like a super long action scene. I actually see where it was like th- this is still going on. Like I almost turned to the person I was with and like this this is still going on. Okay, and it was it was decent, but um, and also I I, I think they they must have gotten the rights to Beastie Boy Sabotage because I know they used it with in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three and they used it again. I'm pretty sure it was Sabotage, if I remember correctly, um, in this one, and I think they used the entire song. Um, but it also felt like, at least the first fight, I'm like, I don't know if we've earned this or not yet. I think it, it really just felt like um, we it should just fight now. That's, you know, kind of, we you know, let, let's show their powers, you know. So I'll say the good thing about it, though, was it's short. It's only an hour and 45 minutes. Um, it has a great post credit scene, which you know all about already because you spoiled it for you or you either spoiled it for yourself or somebody spoiled it. I went searching. Yeah. You went searching after, for it after some, some vague, uh, uh, things saying online. I'm like, look, I'm not going to get to it this weekend. Mm-hmm. Google, 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 watch yeah. you watch. Oh, 
somebody looks like they pirated that. Of course. Let's watch it anyway. Yeah. Um, and I like I look, I like all the characters. I like I like all the actresses, you know. I I like uh uh Brie Larson, I like Amon Villani, I like I don't know the name of the person that plays Monica Rambo. That's so racist. I, I, I don't know it. But I like her. Everybody was good. Um Nick Fury was in there. You know, I would say it's it's look, it's not I know it's it's like the lowest box office or whatever. Tiana Paris. That's what uh, that's the Tiana it. Paris. Yep, that's what I would have guessed. Um I would say it's on the level of Ant Man and the Wasp, Thor the Dark Worlds, Iron Man Three. Thor the Dark World. Yeah, it's on that. It's on that level where it's like you okay, it's a movie. Third best Thor movie. You might, uh, you might be right about that one. Third or fourth best, yeah. And Iron Man Three, the third best Iron Man movie. That is true. That is true. Now you mean uh, Ant Man and Wasp or Ant Man and Wasp Quantum Mania? Either one. Have you seen Quantum Mania? Yeah, of course. Okay, just make sure. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think Quantumania is worse than Ant-Man and Wasp, but it it's uh, very subjective. It's very close, probably too. Yeah, so. yeah, they're very close for me. So, but yeah, so you know, average. Average it is. Okay, not quite middle of the road. Third or fourth tier Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what you're saying is I don't need to rush out and watch it. No, wait till it's on Disney Plus in two months. It'll probably be more like March, probably, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. They seem to be doing uh, that. It's like a 90-day thing, I think, honestly, or something. So, The Marvels Disney Plus uh, why? <laughs> Right now, the, the top Google re- result is watch the Marvels <laughs> on Disney Plus. Um, let's see. Will again the ninety day thing, um, which would be around this from Screen Rant. Mm-hmm. If they stick to that, uh, would be around February tenth. Yeah. Um, now, if the the earliest potential release date on Disney Plus could be as early as December twenty third, so just in time for the holidays. If you want to ruin your holidays by watching the Marvels at home, you could do it. You know, it could be a Christmas movie. Don't don't do that to Christmas. By the way, somebody um, said that their parents think of Harry Potter as a Christmas movie. What are your thoughts on that? False. Okay. Like they only have one little scene that takes place. It, it, you can't take a movie that has one little scene incorporating Christmas or, or one <laughs> little part of the movie that equates for maybe ten minutes and be like, it's a Christmas movie. No, it's not. I I, I agree with you. Um and uh I this person even said that like well, her parents are, are say it's a Christmas movie because it has Christmas in it. And I said, well, that's the same logic that people use for Die Hard, Gremlins, and um, Batman Returns is, well, it has Christmas in it. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Well, yeah, I agree. Damn it. I want some Santa Claus. I want some elves. I want some magic. Magic. Yeah. Or people um, throwing paint cans at Robert. <laughs> that also counts. That also has Santa the- Claus in it. I think the magic there is they lived. I think the magic there is a young boy defending his home. Yes. It's like, this is my house. The I have magic to defend it. of um, a tar and a nail. The magic of. Micro machines. That's a good one. Or the, uh, um, the, uh, the tar pulling the socks, the shoes, and then eventually the socks, and then crushing the glass uh, tree ornaments with your bare feet. Yes, yes. So we could go on and on. We could. The magic of Home Alone. Yes, it's a good movie. It one is. of my top five. Did you watch Home Alone or Home Sweet Home Alone? I think the one. Yeah, that, yeah. that was fun. Yeah, it was fine. The uh, the scene where um, the 
main character is trying to go up the, the driveway that's super slicked out, niced out. Garrett watches that. He just laughs <laughs> constantly, endlessly at that. And I do too, because it's infectious, you know. Okay. So, well, you watched the Marvels, but we, mm-hmm. in the last couple of days, watched another superhero movie, courtesy of, uh, or I don't know where, I don't know, courtesy of, but uh, we watched it from the comfort of our own homes and chairs and on our own televisions. And over on the uh, streaming platform Max, we watched Blue Beetle. Yes. What, what did you think thoughts? about Double B? Oh, 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 oh I was okay. Oh. Um, I thought it was good. Um, I really liked uh, Sholo Majorono. I don't think um, that did it at all. I think that's. I think I think I said it perfectly. Um, I really uh, like him. It, as it, if Bill. it's if it's Sholo, which mm-hmm. may or may not be Maraduena. Yeah, like I said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I don't know. I, I also thought this one was also kind of just like in the middle. You know, like I, I want to see I want to see Blue Beetle again, mm-hmm. you know, and I and I hope they somehow incorporate him incorporate him into the James Gunn verse. Um and I think it really depends on how well Blue Beetle does or did, I guess, whether or not he's gonna be in there. Um I th- I like uh, on this one. I talked about there could have been a redemption arc with, with in uh, the Marvels. I like how this one actually did have a bit of a redemption arc for one of the villains. Correct. You know, um, I the one, one scene, I don't know if you remember the scene or not, but I think it was the scene where like the helicopter is going down and then the pink like foam. Did, okay, and I'm not a I'm not a special effects guy where like it it, it, it bothers me if it's bad. I let a lot of uh, stuff slip, but that looked awful. Well, I, I I remember it. Maybe I didn't catch the perfect. I thought it looked good. It looked it looked like I could have done it in my computer. I, I was like, did they they forget to finish this? Maybe it's supposed to be a little rough, Mike. It's 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 super fast expanding. Safety foam gel. Like, like I said, I, I let so much stuff slide because I hear it all the time for, oh, man, this, you know, the the Black Panther fight scene was awful, you know, blah, blah, all this other stuff. I'm just like, yeah, I enjoyed it. But it just caught it just caught me off guard where I was like, oh, OK, that doesn't look good at all. Other scenes look I, I like the fight scenes in, in, in Blue Beetle. Um I like I like how Blue Beetle was uh, while not marketed as such. It was a uh, another sequel in the Fast and the Furious franchise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all about family. All about family. All I'm about glad family. you know where you I was are, going. With that. You are correct. Um, no, I again knowing moderate amount of of Blue Beetle, uh, particularly Jaime Reyes. So. Blue Beetle's live action debut was actually in the series Smallville. Yes, uh, I remember. In one of the last seasons, maybe nine or ten. Um, and again, that was Jaime Reyes. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this iteration, you know, I obviously much bigger production budget, no matter what you want to say about the foam in the helicopter, which again, I I didn't pay, maybe I didn't notice it as, as well as you. Um, but the only two things that I kind of bumped into about this movie. Uh, first of all, I enjoy the effects. I enjoy the story. Um, they kind of maybe inadvertently fell into the Marvel trap, the MCU trap of the main villain kind of being a duplicate <laughs> power, right? You know, of, of the hero, uh, which what we got from uh, Omec. Uh, but um, again, Without laying down a spoiler, there was some redemption at the end. Uh, the other part for me is leading up to that redemption, like they they went hard. I don't know who wrote the movie, but they they swung hard at like '80s America and the military industrial complex. I guess if if you want to, you know, uh, throw those that particular jargon out there uh, with the the uh, bombing or I, I, I was in diapers for parts of the eighties and, and in grade school for the other part, 
So I don't know all the ins and outs of America's foreign policy in the 80s in regards to Guatemala. I know that my grandparents personally had been to Guatemala several times at that point, uh, you know, going back to the 60s and into the 70s, doing uh, missionary work and setting up dental clinics, etc. cetera. Um, so just to see like a lot of, I guess, blame being levied at the American military when you find out who the real villain is, I think they could have made that point without like throwing the U.S. military under the bus. Okay, yeah. But overall, I really dug the movie. Like, I really enjoyed it. Um, kind of to the point where, like you, like I'm excited for more Blue Beetle. And in the, I guess, maybe the opening credits, perhaps the closing credits, I'm not entirely sure, but I could have sworn that it said, like, you know, Saffron Industries or Incorporated Peter Saffron's production group. Okay. You know, like maybe they had a, a part in it. So I I tend to think that maybe that's a good omen for the James Gunn, Peter Saffron collaborative moving forward and a really interesting mid credit scene. I don't know if excuse me, got the hiccups. Uh, I don't know if you saw that. With uh cord? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that that was interesting too. I, I here's the thing. I think if he gets introduced into the James Gunnerverse. Um, which I think is what we call it now. Um, I think they will use just his character, and I don't think anything from he, this movie will be used. Like it's not, it's not going to be canon. So I have, I have a theory. Okay, and that's all it is. I, I've not done any reading. I've not jumped on Reddit theories or anything else. I wonder if that's not Ted Cord, because I don't think they ever referred to like. Jenny, who's his daughter, as mm-hmm. like hello, is anybody out there? Is 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 my you know or my daughter? I wonder if that's not Booster Gold saying like Ted Cord is oh. alive, your father is alive. You know that 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 was that was where yeah. I, you know, I didn't hear any like first person. Yeah, like I'm here, I'm alive. Come find me, or let me tell you how you can find me. Right. So my my initial impression was Booster Gold on that. I, look, I would I would be fine with that, um, and that kind of goes on with what I was going to say. I, as I know that James Gunn is going to have a Booster Gold either movie or show. I think it's a movie, mm-hmm. um, and I would love for our Blue Beetle be in that because obviously Blue Beetle and Booster Gold go together. Now, usually it's at least from the comic books that I've read, and the very few comic books I've read, it wasn't Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle, Tedrick Cord. It was somebody. Uh, oh yeah, yes, yeah. Sorry, yeah, um, yeah. It was uh, Ted Cord um, and and, and uh, Booster Gold. Um, but they, I would love it if it was Booster Gold, and then Booster Gold's talking about like, hey, I, you know, I knew the guy that was in that suit before. You know, however he wanted to say it, but it's you know, it's it's Jaime Reyes and stuff. I, that would be that would be amazing. You know. But I never well, really thought about it. Yeah, it could maybe maybe it wasn't Ted Cord in that in that video. Maybe it was maybe it was Booster Gold. Well, unfortunately, as it would seem, as is my way, mm-hmm. I spoke before I do it any research, uh, and because I'm on IMDb, mm-hmm. and when I get into, you know, the 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 back end into the uncredited parts, there is a Ted Cord uncredited, um, and that is played by. Actor, director, writer, Bobby McGruther. I don't know who that is, but apparently there's an image of him in a Blue Beetle suit, which kind of weirds me out. Yeah. Do you, uh, uh, like. Speaking of Ted Cord, do you know who the fans apparently want or wanted as a Ted Cord? Was it Nathan Fillion? Nope. Well, not, a, not a surprising guess because people want Nathan Fillion for everything. Uh, right. No. Ted Lasso's own Jason Sudeikis. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be fun. I, although I think he's, he's so synonymous now with Ted Lasso <laughs> that it'd be, you know, you just see him being Ted Cord, but also making a dad joke and, uh, um, uh, you know, so I, it depends. Yes. I, I mean, I, when I see him, I think of Ted Lasso. But I don't know how popular Ted Lasso is. 
best friend of the show, sure. Josh, loves Ted Lasso now. Oh, everyone, everyone that just, that has seen it loves it. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. Um, some people have even watched it more than once. Um, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but oh, you um, said that on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, I don't know that many people that have Apple Plus though. That's what I'm saying. So he could mm. he could still do it. Perhaps here I'll tell you what uh, Blue Beetle did for me. It solidified Susan Sarandon, who is almost unrecognizable in the role except for the voice. Yeah, as a top villain. Oh yeah, uh, and, and by that not just on screen but in real life too. Didn't know about her real life stuff, but yeah, in 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 the movie, yes, villain for sure. So she's yeah. just very consistent through her, the parts that she plays and uh, in her role in society. Yes, I, I appreciate you going along with that blindly. That's a <laughs> lot of trust you're putting on sure. uh, for your part. Yeah. Um, but no, I I did I enjoyed Blue Beetle. I'm hopeful for more Blue Beetle coming. You know from from the DC side of things. And here's the thing. We're a month out now to the day. Uh, Cause on December 22nd, we're going back under the sea with Aquaman two. Yeah. Now is Aquaman two. Is that going to be one that you're going out to the theater and got, buying a ticket or are you waiting for till it's on, on max in two months, uh, two, two or three months later? We'll see. Honestly, we'll see what my work schedule looks like. I might try to pop over there on the 22nd. 23rd is my oldest birthday, and then you get into Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. I wouldn't mind, but we got to play that one by ear. It's 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 tough this, this time of year because, you know, work, there's certain quotas and things like that that I'm still – goals I'm still trying to achieve. So if I'm – if I need to work that day, buddy, I'm going to work. Oh, yeah. if, I can, yeah. if I can afford to go to the movie theater, I'm going to sneak out and go check out a show. So Yeah. Um, and I, we're getting another movie or show or something next month. Echo? Is Echo next month? I thought that was January. Am I, you know, or maybe even March. I can't remember now. I thought we were getting something. Now I can't remember. Um, well, this is unrelated as far as really what we focus on here but on december 15th we're getting wonka okay yeah with Tim- timothy chalamet rowan yep. atkinson hugh grant etc um and i feel like there's one that we're missing on the like the 8th or something of december but maybe it's a tv show and maybe i just have bad memory i definitely have bad memory i don't know so well The only other tidbit of news that we have, because it's a short week, folks. Again, we just recorded on Friday night, and it's Wednesday, so we got a, a short week. But the only other news or tidbits is that uh, you shared this with me, that uh, a new Karate Kid movie has been confirmed, and it will unite the original with uh, the uh, Ralph Macchio, as well as the 2010 remake, which is Jackie Chan and uh, J- Jaden J- yeah. Smith, whatever, Uh Bring those two universes together, which is, I don't know how you're going to do that because Mr. Miyagi died. Is this like Mr. Miyagi's cousin? What the hell? That's what I'm wondering too, because it, obviously um, in the Cobra Kai verse that they, they mentioned, you know, Miyagi dying and everything. And then this, then the Jackie Chan, at least in the, the remake, he played Mr. Miyagi. So maybe they will do something where it's uh, I, I this I hope they don't do this because it sounds so cheesy, but it also would not surprise me if they go, oh yeah, Mr. Miyagi had a a brother that yeah. you know also named Mr. Miyagi. Although uh, uh, the original Mr. Miyagi was from Okinawa, Japan. Right. Jackie Chan is very Chinese, so I I don't I just Par- don't see parallel how. universe. That's <laughs> that's right. The the Cobra Kai verse is going into the multiverse. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, what a that's such a horrible idea. I I just don't I don't know how that succeeds. I also don't know how that they want to do this before introducing Hillary Swank right. into the Cobra Kai verse. They've they've had 
everybody else, I think, from the uh, you know Karate Kid series. Mm-hmm. One that I was like, I somebody watched Karate Kid three, I guess. I don't know, and they put them in, and then but they haven't had Hillary Swinkin. and I'm sure she could do it. Oh yeah, she's know? a rock star. Yeah, I mean a movie star anyway. Um, yeah, and and here's the thing, she's so I forgot that next Karate Kid. Do you know that that movie's almost thirty years old? Wow, nineteen ninety four. I would have never guessed. Uh, nineteen ninety four, and when Hillary Swank uh, did that role, she was like sixteen. Maybe when okay, she filmed okay. it, she was fifteen, something like that. Um, there's definitely space for her in the Cobra Kai verse. Yeah. Now, but um, yeah, I don't know. That's I don't, I don't know how that one's been overlooked so so far. So. Although, look, we say it it's probably going to be bad, and I agree with you. But at the same time, we we're kind of talking about this a little bit off air. If somebody would have said that they were going to make a Cobra Kai series or, you know, a series called Cobra Kai based on the Karate Kid, I would have been like, no, that's going to fail for sure. And that one did surprisingly well. I remember when it first came out, I think the first two seasons were on YouTube, YouTube TV yes. and like, I didn't watch it. I was like, eh, it, you know, I'm, I'm not meant to watch it. And then it got dropped from them and Netflix picked up and then it blew up. Yeah. Um, and it, again, those first few seasons, I'm not saying that the, the latter ones have lacked any, but the, that first season with uh, Miguel training under, um, under uh under uh Johnny Johnny thank yeah. you I was gonna say Tommy's not right Danny's yeah. the other guy <laughs> yeah. uh we're really good and then yeah. the, you know kind of a flip in the next so yeah I mean it, mm, it really tremendous television uh but again being able to do it in a short form where it's not 23 episodes right or something like that that's one of the biggest takeaways. You know, I know uh, listening to Talkville, Michael Rosenbaum and Tom Welling, they're like, you had bad episodes because you had to have 23 episodes every yeah. season. Yeah. You know, exactly. if, if you only have 10, you can cut out a lot of the fluff and get right and, and make sure that every episode is fairly consistent. So, yeah. Yeah. I'll say, the other thing I'll say is if, if the creators of Cobra Kai are involved, then I think it's going to be a little bit better. But mm-hmm. if they're not, then yeah. So, but well, Mike, it. yeah, it's eleven o'clock. Mm-hmm. I still have work to do from the other show I recorded before uh, ours, so I'm going to let you go. Okay, and I want to wish you and all of the listeners and viewers out there a very happy Thanksgiving and a safe and happy and hopefully not too expensive Black Friday and everything else that they need to get through the next week and change because that's how long it'll be until we meet again. Yes, same. You're the man. Don't you forget it. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate everybody uh, tuning in in whatever form you find us. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to do a big help, throw a thumbs up on uh, on the YouTube video. Uh, maybe even click that subscribe. It helps the algorithm, and uh, uh, you know we need all the help we can get, as we like to say. So for my good friend and the co-host of the year, Mike Luther. I'm Greg Mahochko. This is Nerds United, a jittery monkey podcast where we remind you each and every week to be kind and rewind. This is a production of the Jittery Monkey Podcast Network. For more jittery shenanigans, go to jitterymonkey.com.